Okay, guys. It's still on. Yeah. She has to go to Walker. Or she was on a scooter. Okay, guys. This is where we are. It has black, black, because you use that as one of your speaker identifications. Because say a guy was wearing a black suit or a black tie. But when you're in a deposition, the guy talks and kind of catches you by surprise. It's the first thing that you see if you don't really already have a symbol for him. Black, black. Okay? F2. Push F2. Brings up your speaker list. Everyone have it? Yeah. You get it? Got it? Everyone has it? Okay. We want to define it as Mr. Smith. Put your cap locks on. Mr. Smith. Got it? Everyone? Push in. You could push enter or put your arrow there for OK. Automatically puts it in there. Control J puts it in the job dictionary. That's how you do it. OK? Can we do it like one more time? We're going to do it one more time. Now, Scroll down to Mr. Smith. This is a dumb question. No. But don't be scared to ask questions, guys. Only because I'm really bad with punctuation and stuff. But mm -hmm. are the, oh, that Alcor yeah. And are they always going to be capitalized? The all oh, yeah. Names, the number, yeah. Right? It's all caps. Okay. And it already knows. That was a good question. She asked, is it always going to be in caps? When it's in colloquy, it already knows to put it in all caps. It already knows. So if you're in lowercase, and you put in lowercase, does it change it over automatically, or do we have to have caps? You know what? It may. It may. So always put it in caps. When you have, when you drop, when you pull up your speaker list, you always want that in caps, because that's always going to be your colloquy. Okay. Let's go down to Jones Jones. Scroll down, guys. Scroll down to Jones Jones. Control G twice. It's just right, yeah, 25. Y'all got it, guys? Talk to me. Yes. Yes. Back there. Control G twice on Jones. F2. Cap locks. Mr. Jones. Enter. Control. Let's try Control T. Say you want it in a trash dictionary. 
Well, you know what? No, we won't do that. We won't do that because <laughs> it's all right. It's it's okay. I mean, if if you did, it's fine. It's gonna set it up either way. You can do Control J or Control T. It doesn't matter. Just don't do Control M. And it doesn't really matter because it's just going to change it in the tutorial. But for a job, you don't want it read as Mr. Jones in a job in your main dictionary. Okay? Y'all got that? Pretty neat. Y'all want to do it again? Y'all okay? Y'all feel okay with that? We'll do it one more time. Go down to green. Control G twice. F2. Cap lock, Mr. Green. Enter. Brings it up. Control J sets it up in colloquy. Okay? Yes. Pretty neat, guys. So let's say we let's. put it. <laughs> um, like, let's say we put Mr. Green in a trash dictionary. Okay. Or we put it in our main dictionary, but we did it by accident, we want to put it in another dictionary. Yeah. Good question. Right here. Let's say you accidentally put Mr. Green in your main dictionary. Great question. You know what? I messed up. No big deal. Put your cursor on there, on Mr. Green. F9. We'll say that, you know, the tutorial is your main dictionary. It's going to bring it up. Did you get okay with it? What's that? Did you get okay with it? With what? I mean... You know what, for some reason it's it's not bringing up the dictionary that is... Let me show you in, in, a, real, in a real transcript. Right here, I've got it. F9 brings it up. These are right, my main dictionary. Bring it up. That's what it's defined as. It's already defined. So if you changed it, and it had Mrs. Hansen right here, no big deal. Put your cursor in here. I oh, you know what it might be. Yeah, shift M. Shift M allows you to modify. Bring it in here, put your cursor right there, backspace, all the way through to where Mrs. Hansen isn't there anymore because this is my symbol for attorney too. <coughs> I'm going to show you real quick. <clears throat> Let's just say, for argument's sake, that's what I defined it as. I messed up put it in my main dictionary instead of putting it in a job dictionary or a trash dictionary or whatever. Well, you know what? It went into my main dictionary. Well, I don't want that symbol to come up as Miss Hansen every time. No big deal. Get on to the, uh, uh, the speaker identification that's in your transcript. Highlight it, F9. Ask you if you want to go to your dictionary. F9 is your dictionary. F9, it says you want to go to your main dictionary. Ask you yes, type yes. It brings you to this little box right here. Well, it shows you that now this symbol right here, your steno and your text is Mrs. Hansen because that's what you defined it as in your main dictionary. In the last time that you put it in, instead of putting it in a job dictionary. No big deal. Shift M allows you to modify. Put your cursor right there. Bring it all the way back. I want to define it as attorney two. Okay, voila. That's how you fix it. So if you make a, if you make a mistake, it's no big deal. You can always fix it. And this is how you do it. So if you accidentally put it in your main dictionary, that's how you fix it. What were we supposed to do for Bob Bob? What were we supposed to have in 
Um, go into uh, highlight it. F two. Mr. Robertson. And it doesn't it doesn't really matter. I mean, you can put whatever you want. Mr. Zarati, Mr. Longorio, you pull whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. The tutorial is really telling you what it's supposed to be defined as, but I mean, you can define it as anything you want. In there is supposed to be Mr. Robertson. Any questions about any of that stuff? We're almost done, guys. We're going to get through this, and then we're, we'll probably be done. Any questions about this? <coughs> really important, guys. So if you do, ask. No? no. Okay. Let's see some of the choices that AutoMagic offers at the start or end of a paragraph. Here, my cursor... Here, my cursor is on the very beginning of this speaker paragraph. Pressing 2 would give this paragraph to the second speaker on the speaker list. Pressing 3 would open the speaker list so I could choose someone else. Other choices make it easy to join this paragraph to a preceding one, or to change it to any other kind of paragraph in the system. And the info bar is showing the keyboard shortcuts for these functions. This time, my cursor is on the first word of the paragraph. At this spot, pressing 4 would change this to a byline using the speaker question format. Let's change this speaker paragraph to an answer. I'll press the 7 key. We saw one byline format, now let's see another. I'll press 1 to turn this into a byline in the question speaker format, and pressing 2 would indicate that Mr. Jones is asking the question. Two different byline formats very easily inserted. This time, let's go to the end of a paragraph. That's where you'll often want to insert a block of text from a file. So the number one choice is to read in text from a block file. But maybe you want to change the sentence to end with a question mark or a dash. AutoMagic is offering these shortcuts, but it's also teaching the hyper keys or speed keys. These are just some of the choices that AutoMagic offers because Eclipse understands the kinds of editing that you might need to do at the start or end of a paragraph. A lot of information right there, guys. A lot of information. So I'm going to go through it again and kind of stop and explain kind of what it's telling you. All right? Let's see some of the choices that AutoMagic offers at the start or end of a paragraph. End of a paragraph. Here, my cursor's on the very beginning of this speaker paragraph. Pressing 2 would give this paragraph to the set. Okay, what it's telling you right here is say you messed up. You can't have Mr. Smith twice. One, it's either a different speaker, or two, you need to join this paragraph with the, with the last speaker. No big deal, you were going too fast, you just hit the speaker again, the guy's still talking. Say he got to the end of the sentence, you thought Mr. Jones was gonna respond, and Mr. Smith goes, you know what, on the farming, yes, blah, 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 well, you already hit Mr. Jones, and you just started typing. No big deal, all you do, or say this was Mr. Jones. That's what they're explaining right here. Say you want to change it. Highlight it. It's going to give you the options a lot of time right here in the auto magic. If it doesn't, no big deal. Highlight it, F2. Brings up your speaker list. Pick Mr. Jones. One, two, three, four, five, whatever. Hit number two. Automatically goes in there. And I'm going to show you what I mean. <clears throat> Say we're right here. You know what? That wasn't Miss Hanson. That was Miss Jennings. Dumb person. Hey. <laughs> Who's teaching this class? <laughs> Say it was Miss Calvert. Okay. What you can do, highlight this, hit OK, changed it. No big deal. No big deal. You know what? It was Miss Hanson. It's already highlighted. F2. Go down to Miss Hansen, enter, pretty neat. 
I'm gonna show you something. It kind of comes later. It comes kind of in the uh, advanced class, but I'm gonna show it to you guys anyway. Say you have it like this, and you wanna you wanna get a shortcut for Miss Hansen. F2. Bring it up. Highlight Miss Hansen. Say you wanna change it. It gives you a shortcut right here. Okay. Well, these don't have the numbers. So then you have to scroll down, highlight it, hit enter, blah, 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 way too much time. You know what? She's my one, two, she's my second speaker. Well, I've already used the numbers. You know what? I'm gonna use a letter. I'm gonna use the B because she's the second speaker. Hit okay, now she's B. So when I want to go in there again, say it's right here, F2, B, now I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to scroll down, whatever. I just go, I just go straight in it. A, I don't have Miss Calvert. She's the first speaker. I want to change it. The shortcut is going to be A. Okay, now she's A. So now when you go in, you know what, I want to redefine it. It's Miss Calvert, A, now it's Miss Calvert. See how I did that? Yeah. You just pick any letter, any number. Whatever you want, whatever, relate. you know, if, whatever you relate to that person. Okay. They're gonna, it's gonna give you the first nine. See, when you go in there, it gives you the first nine. Well, these are the ones that I use all the time. So it's gonna give the first nine. Now, you can rename it. You can come in here and say, you know what? I want to change that to be number one. Change it. Now it's number one, but now the number one up here, you have to come up and change it. So you have to be careful about using, um, using the same ones. So it's easier just to use the letters after that. Does that make sense? Pretty easy. Saves time. Great. Any questions? Second speaker on the speaker list. Pressing three would open the speaker list so I could choose someone else. So Automagic is automatically gonna give you the different choices that it thinks you're trying to do. If you wanna change the speaker, you can push F2 like I just did or just press number three and it'll bring up the speaker list. So it's always thinking what you might want to be doing. So the more you use the software, the more it's going to know kind of what you're trying to do usually. So it's going to give you that option, okay? Other choices make it easy to join this paragraph to a preceding one or to change it to any other kind of paragraph in the system. And the info bar is showing the keyboard shortcuts for these functions. This time my cursor is on the first word of the paragraph. At this spot, pressing four would change this to a byline using the speaker question format. Let's... Do you understand what it's telling you right there? Let's see. Line using the speaker... The byline... Let me show you what a byline... Do y'all know what a byline is? Okay. Is that the the line that separates from the pages? No. Let's see if I can find something that has it. Right here. That's a byline right there. So when you're doing cross-examination, you want to know who's doing the examining. That's your byline. Always needs to be in there. Okay? So this is a byline. Byline. That's what it's saying, right there. Okay. No. This right here is going to tell you it's a byline. Gotcha. Right there tells you it's a byline. That's a centered line. That's a fixed line. I mean, that's a speaker line. Q and A. I mean, a Q line, answer line. All of these will tell you right here. So if you ever have, you know, any doubt of what it is. That's, that's where it's gonna tell you what it is, okay? Byline, question line, answer line, speaker line. 
okay? That's what a byline is. So if you want to set up a byline, it allows you to do that like it was selling you. Question format. Let's change this speaker paragraph to an answer. I'll press the 7 key. We saw one byline format, now let's see another. I'll press 1 to turn this into a byline in the question speaker format, and pressing 2 would indicate that Mr. Jones is asking the question. You, you see what it's saying there? It's saying, you know what? I want to use this. Say it was, they were, you, met, you just hit the symbol for colloquy. Well, it set, it set it up in colloquy by Mr. Jones or Mr. Smith. You know what? I want to change it to question answer by Mr. Jones. That's fine. Put your cursor here, F2, pick Mr. Jones, sets it up as a byline because it sees the question under it, so it already knows what you want to do. And if it doesn't, then you put your cursor here. Putting your cursor there allows you to change the line. Let me show you. So say it's right here, it's a byline, put my cursor there, it brings up the paragraph data. So what do you want to do? It's asking you, what do you want to do? Do you want to set it up as a parenthetical? Do you want to set it up as a fixed line, question, answer, speaker line, any of this stuff? You can set it up as a center, go right there, sets it up as a center line. That's what it does. So if you want to change any of this stuff, all you do is just come in here. Come in here, change it. Well, it's a byline. So I want to change it to the byline. Sets it right there. F2. Ms. Calvert sets it up. See that? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. So now how come it didn't put it in parentheses? And the other one has parentheses. That's what I was going to ask. You can set it up however you want. I don't set mine up in the parentheses. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. So it all depends on how you set up your byline. Not that big of a deal. But if it's in the uniform format rules, then you have to set it up that way. If it tells you that it has to be set up that way, you have to set it up that way. Medium parentheses. Yeah. If it's in the uniform format rules, that's the way you set it up. It's not. But the person you go to work for, once it's set up in parentheses, you're setting it up in parentheses. So you're gonna have to go to your user, Alt U brings up your user things, then you have to go through and change your byline and tell it what and to do. And they will always tell you that. Yeah, yeah. The, so the person identified in the byline is always the person that's going to start questioning. Yeah. So it's, it's assumed. Like, because there's two different ways of doing it with, without the parentheses and yeah. with the parentheses with the question. Mm -hmm. You just automatically know that that top one means that that's who's going to be questioned. Yeah. Yeah. See, in here, it kind of set it up both ways. I think what I had done is I had gone through and changed it in my main because uh, when Mr. Vincent was here, that's the way he kind of sets it up. I don't set it up that way. So it just kind of sets it up like this, which is no big deal. Okay. You had a question? Oh, I was just wondering, um, to set it up in like the parenthetical, yeah. would you go to the up to the speaker list too, or is that something different? That's something different. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to set it up um, for a parenthetical, you can put your line right here, put your cursor right there, and it's going to ask you what kind of a different line you want. Did you try it? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not into, into the thing. That's okay. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Just We're in the lesson right now. So it's not going to have it in there. It's not going to have it in there? Yeah, this is, this is an actual transcript that I did. Oh. So that, that's why it has that. Okay? Okay. Two different byline formats very easily inserted. This time, let's go to the end of a paragraph. That's where you'll often want to insert a block of text from a file. So the number one choice is to read in text from a block file. But maybe you want to change the sentence to end with a question mark or a dash. Automagic is offering these shortcuts, but it's all... Y'all remember that, right? How to put a period and a question mark at the end of the line? In hyperkeys? It's just Q and P. You can be anywhere in that sentence it's not gonna put it at the end of a paragraph if it has like four sentences in that paragraph. It's gonna put it at the end of the sentence. So you can be at the beginning of the sentence, the middle of the sentence, it doesn't really matter. So it only works if there's like a question mark there and you want a period? Like right here. Say you want a period, you push P. You know what, you're at the beginning of the sentence. It doesn't matter where you are in that sentence. As long as you're in hyper keys, push Q. Put your Q, put your question mark. If you're not in hyper keys, it's Alt. Alt P, Alt Q. Does it. But if you're in hyper keys, it's just P and Q. Okay? okay? Any questions? So teaching the hyper keys or speed keys, these are just some of the choices that Automagic offers because Eclipse understands the kinds of editing that you might need to do at the start or end of a paragraph. Okay, any questions about any of that stuff that we just covered? Because you can use colors. You can use, really what this is, it's a speaker table. So you can, you can like in a deposition, you can use it. 